Hey guys, it's the Meds Tidia and today we'll be looking at HIV. This includes looking at the transmission, treatment, screening, its association to AIDS and much more. HIV, otherwise known as the human immunodeficiency virus, is known to be debilitating as it enters and damages CD4 T helper cells. There are two main types including HIV-1 and HIV-2 where HIV-1 is the most common type. AIDS on the other hand is the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. This is known as the later stages of HIV. Initially, this can present as a flu-like illness, but once the disease progresses to AIDS, the patient will be susceptible to various infections, malignancies and other illnesses. This is because the HIV pathogen causes a reduction in the number of T helper cells, meaning that their immune system cannot combat even simple infections. Once the CD4 cell count is really low, there are some specific examples of presentations that a HIV patient can experience. Firstly, PCP, or otherwise known as pneumocystitis gyruvachi pneumonia, presents similarly to pneumonia, but the patients often have desaturation upon exertion. Cytomegalovirus is when patients usually present with blurred vision and on fundoscopy there are retinal hemorrhages alongside necrosis. This is often described as a pizza retina and IV ganciclovir is used as treatment. Kaposi sarcoma is caused by the HHV8 virus and patients have purple papules on their skin and mucosa, as you can see here. Toxoplasmosis presents as ring-enhancing lesions on CT scans of HIV patients. The virus usually spreads through three main methods. Firstly, it can transmit through unprotected sexual activity. Secondly, any fluid can transfer the virus as well, such as open wounds, sharing needles, etc. Finally, it can be transmitted from mother to child during pregnancy, birth and breastfeeding. A lot of people who have HIV often don't know they have it until it's progressed. This is why screening is so important. However, antibody tests can be negative for up to three months following exposure. So repeat testing is really important as well. The P24 antigen testing is now also done alongside the HIV antibody testing. The P24 antigen testing can show positive results from week one to week four, whereas the antibody testing can be at four to six weeks. If a patient is asymptomatic and HIV is suspected, then testing is done four weeks after the potential exposure. If they have negative results, they are tested again at 12 weeks. The management of HIV is usually done by a specialist and it involves antiretroviral therapy. This is given to all patients regardless of how far along they are with their disease. The aim of the antiretroviral therapy is to maintain a normal CD4 and an undetectable viral load. If this has been achieved, the patient can then be managed 
as we would manage a negative HIV patient. Alongside the antiretroviral therapy, the patients can also be provided with other additional measures to prevent associated complications. For example, this includes the prophylactic use of cotrimexazole in patients with CD4 counts of less than 200 in order to protect them against PCP. HIV can also increase the risk of cervical HPV infections and therefore cervical cancers. So they're required to have an annual cervical screening. Although live vaccinations are avoided, all their vaccinations should be up to date, including the hepatitis A, B and pneumococcal every five years, as well as the annual influenza vaccines. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at The Med Studio.